different, but as we know, the person that you really need to be in relationship with at this time of Christmas is who? You. Yeah, and so we're talking about the heart of Christmas. Who, who is carrying your heart around? That would be you. So I show up at this experience uh, at, the, at the Buddhist retreat center, at the spiritual retreat center, and uh, the first thing you do is you go in and you get your yogi job. Well, two years ago, I was, they asked me to chop vegetables, so I chopped vegetables. And then the next year, I vacuumed, which was great, because you can vacuum and meditate. You notice that? So that's what I did for that time. And so I walked in, and I was a little behind uh, the usual check-in time, and I got there sort of later in the, in, the, in the time, the day, and I went to check-in, and they said, oh, we only have one job left for uh, a, a female. And I said, oh, really? What's that? And they said, you're going to be in charge of the women's meditation hall bathroom. <laughs> and she had this glow out of, coming out of her face. And I, I had just come from the Bellagio, you see. And I'm sort of... <laughs> and I know I'm supposed to say namaste, but I'm not quite getting it. And I said, um, oh, thank you. Uh, let me get this little sheet of instruction and get out of here before I say something else. And so, um, so I will tell you, I was kind of not so thrilled. I was a little challenged that I didn't have my vacuum cleaner. But the next day, I went into this very large public bathroom, and I got busy. And I took my little scouring stuff. I did the sinks. I did the windows. I did all these, these toilets. And I was feeling a little like, well, okay. Because, see, this is a community where everybody serves. And everyone, people cook, people clean, and we all, we don't talk. And it is the most amazing experience of love you've ever encountered. Maybe because we're not talking. I don't know. But everybody's involved in this community and how this happens. So the first day I was sort of, okay, I'm doing this. I know this will be some kind of a spiritual opportunity that I haven't quite noticed yet. But the next day, after 24 hours of just being deep in the heart of my experience, I turned on that sink to scrub the sink, and I started noticing running water. Running water. Where does this water come from? I don't really know, but it's running and we have toilets the flesh. I mean, this is not your typical Christmas message, but it was amazing. And I started to recognize all the things that I don't notice, that I take for granted, that I just walk around in my life and don't notice these things. And I don't notice when I walk into some kind of a public restroom that somebody's been in there cleaning it. And as I stepped out, you know, it's all anonymous, what you do there, I watched people walk in, and I was hoping, I was thinking, I hope they feel the love that has been part of my being of service to this community. And it was the most fascinating experience of feeling so full and so full of love by my engaging in something that reminded me of that. You know, the service that we give in the world and the places that we forget who has served us. You know, it was such an amazing thing. Gosh, how did I miss this whole thing that I miss every single time in, in my life? The way that the world has already been set up for me to awaken, for me to recognize how much I've been given by having my life, by having my life. So I want to take a moment to have a very heartfelt shout out to our conservators that clean this whole building, that clean our bathrooms, that wash our, our staircase rails, and do all this thing uh, that we don't notice, probably, I notice it this moment, <laughs> uh, when we come in to any place. Do you realize who's been here before you to love up the space for you to be here? It's a huge piece of gratitude the huge heart of Christmas. So those people would be Tim Locke, Cassie Jennings, and Dennis Kelly, who's up in our sound tower. Let's give them a hand. Because most of the time, we feel like our giving is something that we're giving from a place of emptiness. But I can tell you, friends, if you start to look at all the ways you've received, 
this incredible planet on which we live, this, all this air you have to breathe, it's like everywhere, and how somebody has gone before you to make your way comfortable, make your way. If you just start noticing, you'll be blown away. And there's nothing like a period of silence to start noticing the animals and the grass and the toilets. <laughs> it's amazing how incredible this life is. And then it doesn't become just about December 25th, it becomes about your life. You know, where's the cake? It's inside of me, and it's always been there. So how do I engage in something that reminds me more of who I am? So this year, my friends, I wonder if we could really engage in the thought of peace on earth. If Jesus taught us, be still and know. Do we spend the time being quiet this time of year and reflecting on how can I be of service? How can I engage in a place that means something to me? Because I can tell you that is the purse that will never wear out. You know, Jesus taught us, he said, don't build up, don't store up things that are of earthly good, that will decay and mold and, and rust. You know, those things are temporary but store up your treasure in heavenly things. You know, caring for people, engaging with people, because those are the things that are eternal and will never wear out. Those are the real gifts of this life and certainly of celebrating this Christness that is within you. So how is it that that would work for you this year? You know, do we consider somebody that needs to be visited that's ill? Do we consider maybe a person that's older that can't leave their house? Do we consider being here at Unity Temple in all the ways that there are to serve? I must say, uh, Paul Weingarten, who's back here, yesterday I was uh, doing a christening and he's here cleaning out the seats and this morning he was up there cleaning out the seats and, and I, I just recognize the joy that comes when people get to be part of an experience that works because they've already been fed. You know, consider somebody that's really touched your life that could use your presence. Your presence, it's free. And it is that overflowing cup that is you. So deep in the heart of Christmas is how we get to give this from this place that we've already been given, from this resource that has, is our birthright. But we have to remember what that is. I do love Christmas stories, and I will have to quote my favorite one, and I love that your tie is Dr. Seuss, because Dr. Seuss is a fantastic metaphysician. And so I invite that little kid in you to listen to this, because that little kid knows all about the love that they are. That we know about the Grinch, right? He thought, like many of us think, that it's all about the presence. And he was frustrated and miserable because of that, and you know that misery loves company. So the Grinch went down into Whoville and took all the Who's presents. And he gathered them up because he wanted them to be miserable because he was miserable. And he packed him up on his sleigh and he goes to Mount Crumpet to dump it. And he's up there on Mount Crumpet and he puts his hand to his ear because he wants to hear those Who's say what? Boo Hoo, all right? But he's listening, but see, these are the Who's. And the Who's know whose they are, right? So do we know whose we are? We're spirit, right? So he's listening for those whose to say boo-hoo. See, the whose know whose they are. And the whose down in Whoville, the tall and the small are singing without any presence at all. And the Grinch started pondering till his ponderer was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, he thought, means a little bit more. So let's get deep in your heart during the meditation to be with that great soul that is you. <laughs>